So we've been talking about surface area of different shapes, prisms and cylinders, pyramids and cones. Now we got to hit volume. So going back, so rehitting those same shapes, but now talking about volume and just sort of seeing how that is different from surface area. So our objective, we're going to learn and apply formula for volume of prism and cylinders. That should probably have an S at the end. Prisms and cylinders. Okay, so that we're talk, going back to shapes we've already talked about, prisms and cylinders, but now talking about volume. Again, these formulas, they're on this sheet so you can use during class and stuff. You don't have to memorize these. These are also on your formula chart. You just got to know what each one of these letters means. All right, so oblique <coughs> and a right cylinder. Oblique is what you got here. Oblique just means it's sort of it's leaning. A right cylinder is one that, that is sort of that it, it's standing straight up and down. But the formula is the same. The formula for volume is the same no matter if it's oblique or right. So given this picture, formula for a cylinder volume equals big B times H. Big B is the area of the base. And because the base is a circle, instead of writing big B, I can just use pi r squared because the area of a circle is pi r squared. And this H is the perpendicular height of the cylinder. So given that this radius is 4 and my height is 3, and I've got all the information that I need, I've used my formula. Volume is equal to pi r squared h. Pi, my r, if my r is 4, my r squared is 16, and my height is 3. 16 times 3 is 48, so my volume is 48 pi centimeters cubed. I'm doing volume, my units are always going to be cubed. Right? A cube. Okay, so something about a cube is that all my side lanes are the same. So 13 meters this way, that means every other edge on this cube is, is also 13 meters. So the formula is the same. It's still volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. But because all my side lengths are the same, and because they're squares, I, I can get the area of a square by just doing length times width. But of course, if it's a square, they're the same. And then that would give me the area of the base, and then multiply that by the height to give me the volume. But again, if it's a cube, the height is also the same. So I'm just going to take that, that side length and cube it because that is basically taking my length times my width times my height. But of course, if it's a cube, they're all the same. So I'm just going to. I'm just going to cube my side length. So if my side length is 13. Volume is equal to S cubed. In this case, it would be 13 cubed, which would be 2197 meters cubed. All right, rectangular prism. Formula, volume is equal to, again, big B times H, where big B is the area of the base. But because it's a rectangle, I can just do length times width, because the area of a rectangle is length times width. So to get the air volume here, volume is equal to length times width times height. So in this one, it would just be 11 times 5 times 8, which would be 440 feet cubed. Other oblique and right prisms, same formula. The formula doesn't change. Area of the base, big B, times the height. And remember, the, your, your bases are the two sides of the prism that are parallel to each other. So in this shape, it would be my two triangles here on the end. This triangle and this triangle. That is my base. So formula to get the volume of this shape. Again, it's still big B times H. But my big B, again, area of the base, my base here is a triangle. And how do I get the area of a triangle? It's just 1 half times the base times the height. And i still got to multiply that by this H, which is the height of the prism. That's why I sort of wrote H prism so we didn't confuse the height of the triangle with the height of the prism. So if I use my numbers, base times height, 7 times 6 is 42, 42 times 1 half is 21. And then the height of the prism again is how far is it from one base to the other, which in this case it's 8 yards. So I have 21 times 8, and so my volume is 168 yards, and again, cubed. So more examples. So this time we're just okay, describing the effect on volume. So remember, when we were doing surface area, if I changed all the dimensions, then the change on the surface area was that change squared. So let's say I had a rectangular prism, and I found the surface area. 
And then, let's say I multiplied all the dimensions by 4. What effect would that have on the new surface area? It would be that change squared. So if I multiplied all the dimensions by 4, the new surface area would be times 4 squared, which would be times 16. So if, let's say I multiplied all the dimensions by 3, then the change on the surface area would be times 3 squared, which would be times 9. Okay, so let's see what happens when I do volume. So I have this initial shape. I've got a cylinder, height of 15, radius of 8. And if I use my formulas, I'll get that my original volume is 960 pi. The area of the base times the height will give you 960 pi. All right, now, it tells me the dimensions are doubled. So instead of the height being 15, it'll be 30. Instead of the radius being 8, it'll be 16. And if I do the volume of the new cylinder, it's 7,680 pi centimeters cubed. So what happens here? When I go from 960 pi to 7,680 pi, it goes up by the change cubed. So I'm, if I double the dimensions, I have to cube that change. So 2 cubed is 8. That is the effective change. So if I, when I multiply my dimensions by 2, it ends up multiplying the volume by 8 because it, it's that change cubed. And I can see the same thing over here. Now I have a rectangular prism. My original volume is just 12 times 3 times 6, which gives me 216 centimeters cubed. Then it tells me to multiply all the dimensions by one third. So now this one is 4, this one is 1, this one is 2. So the volume is this, 4 times 1 times 2. My, my, my new volume is 8. So original volume 216, new volume 8. Again, what was my effective change when I went from 216 to 8? I multiplied it by 127, one or I divided by 27. Where does that come from? It's by cubing the change. I multiplied each one of my dimensions by one-third. And the effect on volume is I have to cube this. So one-third cubed is one-twenty-seventh. So I, all I got is multiply my original volume by 127th, or again, just divide it by 27, to get your new volume. All right, that la this last one I'm leaving for you. Just think about what it's asking you to do, and see if you can come up with the answer. We'll talk more about these in class.